Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe so we can get you these messages every single week. Have a great day. Welcome to the family room. Welcome to the family room. Another wonderful Wednesday. Wednesday. We're glad to have you along with us. Uh, which, you know, we missed you last week. We had to recuperate from vacation and everything. <laughs> no, but uh, you know, while while we get going, let us know where you're watching from. We're Again, we're, we're glad to have everybody along with you. We've got quite a few new uh, friends and followers and yes. haters as well. Uh, glad to have you along as well. Uh, real quick, just the announcements while we get going. We have another food truck coming this Sunday, another food truck Sunday. We're going to have, uh, as far as I know, the Yamo truck yes. again, which was deli- that, that Yamo, cheese thing it was, was yummy. amazing. And shout out to Casey's Dogs, too, because those were those some were of the great. best hot dogs I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And the other truck, a big one, is Hurricane Patty's food truck. I've heard some good good. things on that. So that'll be phenomenal. This uh, Sunday after the uh, 10 o'clock service. Yes. Yeah. After open to the public. So anybody driving by can stop in and have something. Exactly. And if you've been looking for the right time to invite one of your friends and didn't know how how to get them to church, tell them that there's going to be some food trucks here. Uh, And again, this is all about supporting local businesses, helping them out. Obviously, everybody loves to have a quick meal, especially right after church. But what better way to do it than to step right out of the doors after getting fed by God and then going out and feeding your belly with mortal food? It was so good last time. I was so surprised. And our people were there and they stood in line. They sold out. They sold out, and you guys did that, and they're hoping to do that again. So let's do it again. It just supports the business. and. Uh, what what great food as well. The prices were great. I, I had anticipated that they might be a little bit higher than what we thought, but they are fantastic prices. So supporting local people, supporting the business right after church. Fellowship, people hung around. We're going to put some picnic tables out there, so we'll have some more tables so that everybody can sit around a little bit better. It's going to be going to be a good Sunday. That's, that's a big one. I like to support them local businesses, yes. especially with all, you know, nothing against chain stuff really, but it is nice to support nice to do that. local families I out see. of family church. Kelsey Cochran, my wonderful wife. Apparently I'm just going to use wonderful all the time now. Wonderful. Uh, she's watching from the softball field. So uh, that's wonderful. It's a good time. Um, also, March 7th is the next Dining with Dignity. March 14th um, is the next women Women's Fellowship Night, and I'm pretty sure Queenie, Quinetta Ooh. Lewis, is the, be the speaker? guest speaker, I think, Fantastic. for that one. Uh, without wavering, that new thing that mom's That's doing. That's mom, or Kathy Cochran's <laughs> mom. That's <laughs> Kathy Cochran's new ladies uh, study on Tuesday nights. It's going to be good. It's coming up on March the 19th. That's when it starts. She'll probably be telling us all about that a little bit more this Sunday. I talked to the Arsenals, Rick and Robbie. They have some new things coming. Rick's telling me there are some new men's groups that are coming. Uh, so all the small groups, they're kicking in right now that are good. Don't forget uh, Kelsey's fam group. Yep, we've got multiple fam groups. You've got the men's, the men's one, group. Yep. Um, which is... Uh, online. All online, and we're working on getting like a weekly Zoom call. Um, we've got the young adults, 18 to 40, um, fan group as well. Right now, they just kicked that off on Monday. Uh, that was a good one to start with. And, you know, we've got the other ones, you know, there's women's and if you want to get involved on some of the ministries, there's all kinds of stuff on, on the app. So if you're scratching your head and saying, what all is going on, go to our website or get the app. It'll tell you everything that's going on. There is a lot, (laughs) there is a lot that is going on. There is a lot. Hard to keep up. Yes, it uh, looks like the next baptism is on April 7th as well. And one thing I'm looking forward to, and I'll go ahead and spill the beans, is I have submit the app for the TV review. So coming up soon, as soon as that gets approved, uh, in addition to being able to get it on your phone or your iPad, you'll be able to download our app on uh, Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and Google TV. Now, what what, what would that mean? What would that do? Is that just so that they can... Uh, I think it's um, essentially, I think it's just a way that you can pull the sermons up. If you didn't want to go to YouTube and you just wanted to watch it through the app, um, you know, you can get it through that way. Me personally, I like going through YouTube and trying to kick that algorithm into gear so that it gets out to more people. Um, You know, we've seen that happen recently (laughs) with with Facebook. But um, Sunday. Speaking of that, what's going on on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all that kind of stuff? Anything happening? YouTube. 
has slowed down. Slowed. Slow. <laughs> slowed. That's not a word. <laughs> slowed Slow. down a little bit. Um, but recently, uh, a reel, Kelsey dropped that reel from my last sermon. It was which, real. Um, you know, out of context, people, I guess, watched the first five seconds and thought that I was um, we were doing advocating the, the use bathroom. of cocaine and, you know, keeping cocaine in the bathroom. Coming for to people. church drunk and. Coming to church drunk and everything. No, I'm just simply stating the fact that Jesus will meet you where you're at. He wants you to come to you know to church, you, whatever state you're in. And uh, that thing blew up, and we had 98% good comments. I would say there's been some you know little oh it's going to be a hater, nasty man. people. But uh, how many thousands of views? As of right now, February 28th mm -hmm. at uh, six. What is the clock? Six. Oh <laughs> I'm losing myself. 6.05 .05 p.m. when I last checked, there was 201,000 views on that one reel alone. So Come God on. is getting the word out there. That is. I see people showing up in the chats. I see Jen, Brandon, Sheila, Kathy. It's a wonder. A lot of wonderful information. Thank you, Brandon. Just wonderful. It's a wonderful time. The women's Bible study is going to be wonderful. He's going to love that. That's going to be our wonder, our word for tonight. Hey, Jessica. Word. Watching from St. Augustine, glad to have you all with us tonight. Thank you for being there. So Sunday, hidden things. Let's go. We won't be long tonight because um, we've got some things that we've got to get to. Very cryptic. But we're hiding that from you. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, I preached on hit pre pre preached. I don't know what that word is. Preached. This is why we're going short because we can't talk. On hidden <laughs> things. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. And then uh, I added Psalms 51 to that uh, confession that it came as a result of one of your sermons. Do you remember which one? Uh, no, it was, but it was, it was like three or four weeks ago. So it was, you know, some way back in the rotation. Uh, and I don't even remember how, you know how it is, we've talked about it, the anointing when, when it happens. Sometimes people hear things in a sermon that you say, well, I didn't say that. I've, yeah, I've had that. Right? And so you just happened to hear what you needed to hear. Well, in that sermon, you were making a transition from something to something else. And you talked about the effect of hidden things in your life. And boy, right there on the front row, God just put a finger on something. And, and it was very clear to me that this was something that uh, he's been dealing with me about for years. And it's something that, you know, you can't we keep whistling past the graveyard and you got to deal with it. And it became that that sermon. Um, and a confession again, when I started, I started thinking it was going to be all one, one sided. It's going to be about, you know, hidden sin and the things that we hide and, and all of that, because I was raised in that church. I was raised in a legalistic Pentecostal rule given church, fire and brimstone, all of that hell is coming and you're in it. And, and I was raised in that. So I thought, well, that's where we're going to go. And we, we touched on that, but um, it ended up somewhere else, and and I had people commenting on the, to it afterwards that it was a, a good balance that it kept you it kept you staying there because of the stuff that was added in there at the end. Did you did you stray from your notes? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Sunday was a good day. Sunday was one of those liberty days where you feel that liberty in yourself to just go. And it was, I'm getting there. <laughs> you are. I did you're notice you're, you're starting to move a little more. Though, so one of these days you're gonna break off of that pulpit. Ma no, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stay right <laughs> it's a there. Security That's, blanket. <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> but uh, you watching in the chats, if you saw it, um, let us know what a line was that maybe you heard that uh, stuck with you. That kind of thing. If there's anything that kind of God dealt with that, I talked all the way back in 1992 when, or 82 when I was a children's pastor. How I told the story of Jericho and the walls coming down and all that kind of stuff, and then just. <laughs> Using that fear-based sermon mentality. <laughs> Kids, that's what happens when you have hidden sin in your life. And yeah, all the hidden, <laughs> all the hidden right? sin that children have. Little children running <laughs> to the altar. <laughs> that candy bar you stole. Confessing their sins before God. Uh, but a valid point uh, that Solomon was making was, he who covers his sins will not prosper. Um, we know it's a, it's a reality from the scripture that if you try to hide something, you cannot, you simply cannot. All the way back to Cain and Abel, something for the family room that I didn't even touch on Sunday, um, Cain slew Abel. And God said, your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. Yeah. You can't hide it. Did you have that in your notes no. or you just 
No. Uh, yeah, no, that's a that's a good one, and that's the that's the thing too. You can't really hide anything; it always comes out mm -hmm. eventually. It, you know, it's it's all just a matter of time. No matter, mm -hmm. I think that's the thing with a lot of, uh, unfortunately, with a lot of Christians, and I'll put air quotes around that because I just, I, you know, I you know me, I've got the problem with the people that love to just bash. attack and bash and point out everyone else's faults as if they have nothing under the sun, you know, going on in their own lives. And obviously that's just not the case. Regardless of if you believe the Bible or not, uh, humanity is, that's just, it's, that's just how it is. We're broken. I mean, you don't even right. have to, you don't have to go to church or read your Bible to realize that humanity is just broken. There's just so much depravity in the world, you know, and nasty things. And obviously there's a lot of good things, but the the people that try to act perfect are always just so full of problems and it's just it's always unfortunate and it's also just it's really sad that you just can't come to grips with the reality that mm -hmm. you're just a broken person we're all broke and you know it's all just different things and it's different mm -hmm. levels and that's the problem with people is you know we feel bad about ourselves so we want to you know point at everybody else and keep our stuff behind our back like i talked about in in that reel and, you know, I, I just can't stand that. It's everybody's got something. And, you know, whether you're ready to come to terms with it and mm -hmm. put it all out for whoever to see, um, you know, that's just you're, mm -hmm. you're never really going to solve anything by acting like you have nothing to solve. You're never going to get over yourself if you act like you're just completely better than everyone else. Right. And so there's no point in keeping anything hidden. Cause the it's line that, that ministered grace to me was... Um, the heart that is set on God is set on confession and not concealment. Uh, that was a line that, that, you know, I said it, but it spoke loud to me. The heart that is set on confession or set on God is set on confession, not concealment. You want it out there. You want to speak it out. You want to get it out in the open. You want to let God have it. But the natural reaction that we have so often, you just so eloquently said, is that we just want to cover it up. Uh, let me keep covering my stuff up and hiding it and hopefully no one will find out because the reality is we think that if somebody finds out how I really am, then I'll get judged. They won't like me. They won't invite me. I, I'll be ostracized and everything else that goes with that. Uh, but the reality is, again, we are all in that same boat. I think that's what makes our church pretty special. We try to acknowledge it. You're real all the way back to the real. Uh, if you came to church drunk, hey, we're glad you're here. And, and, and you just that's your that's what you're working on right now so we'll meet you right there uh people that are dealing with stuff i see debbie kaufman uh, said something you let go of something that you've never shared with anyone it's and it's free it, it, where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty that's where god can set you free if you'll just let him he can set you completely free from whatever it is and the longer you hide it the worse it gets there's something uh i don't remember exactly what it was something i read recently about how um and I, I, the only thing I can do is paraphrase because I don't remember exactly. But it was something along the lines of like one of one of the enemy's greatest tactics is when you when you have a stumbling moment or you slip and you fall mm -hmm. or relapse or whatever. Your immediate reaction, just like Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. is to run and hide from God. He wants mm -hmm. you to feel your shame and he wants you to hide from him. But as you see, God came down into the garden seeking them out. Mm -hmm. So when you sin your natural reaction is to hide it and, you know, to flee. And God's reaction is, no, I want to draw near to you. You know, that's the perfect yes. place to be is in his presence and coming towards him. Instead of running from him and trying to hide your sin, the best thing you can do when you slip up is just come to God. And, you know, it's not like he's going to beat you over the head and, right. you know, oh, you've done so wrong and how could you do this and blah, blah. It's just, you know, I'm still here. I still love you. You know, the Bible says clearly his mercy endures forever. I love that passage. His anger is but for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. We, we emphasize the wrong things. We put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. We, we emphasize the wrong things. His mercy endures forever. Uh, his grace is, is always sufficient. And so those things that we try to hide from, we hide them because we're afraid that God's going to be mad at us. God loves you and his mercy is there for you forever. Tanya, a man is not what he thinks he is. He is what he hides. Uh, a man who keeps secrets is wise, but not as wise as the man who has no secrets to keep. And the quote that I gave, someone asked me for it after church, so I'll give it the one that I came up with. Every unrighteous secret that you have will eventually become the prison that you accept. So if you have unrighteous secrets there in your life. I'll trademark that. 
I should. <laughs> So what did people pull out of that? I know that I'm reading the chat there that you pulled out of that, that uh, confess the sin, forsake it. That's the full reality of it. If you confess it and forsake it, you find mercy. Uh, I started, one of the things that somebody brought up to me afterwards was when I, I talked about how important it is for preachers in our culture today to preach the gospel, bring people to that place of repentance. Uh, Kelsey created a reel out of one of those things about, uh, we have entertainers in pulpits who just want to fill a building up, want to fill all the seats up, but don't ever take you so far that they, you know, get you under, under conviction where the convicting power of the Holy Spirit is there. Um, and that's what's, the repentance is what we need that's going to set us free. There's nothing worse to than listening to a preacher or a sermon, well, obviously a preacher, but there's nothing, nothing worse than someone just filling the air with words mm -hmm. and saying absolutely nothing. <laughs> Right. You know, as bad as like stupid comments and, and, you know, whatever are, there's nothing worse than. And what's crazy is, you know, you like this, this whole thing with a lot of churches and like the syncretism mm -hmm. and, you know, not really preaching. The blending of beliefs. Blending your beliefs, syncretizing and not preaching the word of God and backslide and bring in all this stuff and, and all this. And it's like, I, I, to me, it's it's mind boggling that people just don't get up and leave. Mm -hmm. I see all the comments, Brandon, what done in the darkness will find its way into the light. Speaking from experience, your dirt will always come out. <laughs> Amen as far that. as the podcast, Jessica, no, I, I have not. Uh, well, I'm, I guess I've kind of thought about it, but there's Have you heard his thing so that he does called on. the crucible? Yeah, on, on YouTube, um, every now and again, I'll get a little bit extra Welcome kind of thing to the crucible. And we have I have the, the crucible, which is it's good. It's supposed to be you should dig in little that. shorter <laughs> little shorter ones, but they always end up being much longer than I yeah, anticipated. Yeah, find those. They're on YouTube. They're on YouTube, exactly. Um that's another thing for our Facebook crowd. You're missing out when you're not um subscribe subscribed subscribe. as my kids make fun of me. I gotta make a new one of those. But uh yeah, you're missing out if you're not going on our YouTube. Subscribe. There's, there's, there's so much. There's so the so bulk much. of Sunday, I've talked about sin. Uh, he who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes it will find mercy. But then uh, maybe halfway through, I shifted gears. I felt like it was a divine appointment to shift gears and go to Psalms 51, where David was confronted about his sin with Bathsheba, which appears to be the same exact thing. He concealed his sin. The prophet pointed it out, and then he confessed it. And as he was giving his confession, if you have your Bible, Psalms 51, uh, I hope I made the point well enough where it said in verse 6, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. And that word hidden in that verse means the secret, hidden, closed up thing that needs repair. And man, when, that, when, I, when I saw that as I was studying, it was life. It was like I, I saw something like, okay, well maybe the reason that we're still sinning and the reason that we're trying to hide those sins is because we have that secret, hidden, closed up thing that needs to be repaired. And it went, that took that sermon into a different, completely different direction. The only thing that needs repair is something that is broken, which brings us back to the earlier comments. We are all, We're all broken, every broken. single one of us. And until we get to, you know, heaven, sanctification is a lifelong process. And I think, mm -hmm. I think it's one of the devil's greatest, you know, I guess I said that already, but one of his greatest tactics is mm -hmm. just getting you to beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Betty said the best thing she ever heard was when Tammy Roy yep. told how she came to terms with herself and God. And that's something I'm going to kind of harp on Sunday is uh, we have no problem. I heard it from um, Furtick. We have no problem. Often we we have no problem accepting Jesus, but we have a problem accepting ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's the, the flip side of that coin, just to, you know, I'll bring it up Sunday. Um, but the flip side of the coin is there's like this, the whole thing with Christianity where, you know, like Paul said, he must, or John, sorry, not Paul, John the Baptist said, he must become greater and I must become less. I think a lot of that mm -hmm. people are so worried about pride that we end up just beating ourselves over the head and try to become as little as possible. And it's like we're we're made in the image of God and he gets his glory through us and the things that he does through us. So sitting here beating yourself over the head and making yourself feel like absolute trash mm -hmm. is not the way to do it. 
And if you can't accept yourself so God can move through you and work through you, nothing, how are the people around you going to get changed? Mm. Amen. <laughs> I, I said a, a point that I made. This was I preached this sermon, but it, it's preached a lot to me as well. Um, those are the best ones, by the way. Um, we, we talk a lot in the church about being broken, about being broken and about brokenness, but then we hide what it does and we hide what it looks like. We try to present that, that image. I'm, I'm not broken. I'm, I'm good. Everything's good. <laughs> Somebody that I know of says it all the time, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> You're fine. I'm fine. Everything's just fine. I'm going to go lay in 207 and let cars run over me. I'm fine. <laughs> it's, we talk about brokenness, but then we, uh, we hide what it looks like. That broken place, that broken thing is where the Lord will make, I love that, will make you to know wisdom. So if rightfully handled, all of our broken things and broken places can bring us to the place where we walk then forever in the wisdom of God. We have forever his wisdom that tells us how to make the right decisions and make the right judgments based on the, the experience that we've had in our life. Nothing is wasted. And so every broken thing, people that have said, you know, God dealt with me about something and I'll let it down. Awesome. Expect that to be the tool in your hand that you use against the devil in the future because it's going to happen. Yeah, God has, you know, obviously everything, it, like the Bible tells us, God works everything for good. What mm -hmm. the enemy meant for evil, excuse me, God means for good. And, you know, I think a lot of people like that, they try to hide either what they've dealt with or what they're currently dealing with. You know, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, they always just try to conceal it. And that just leads to chaos in your life. Yeah. You know, it's not that you need to go run down the street and tell everybody, you know, what you're dealing with. But, um a lot of the times that we we don't even bring it to God and we try to hide it as if he as, as if he doesn't know. And the interesting thing is, you know, obviously, like he told Jeremiah, and as we know, we were formed in the or he knew us before we were formed in the womb. He already knows every part of you that, you know, you want to hide. He knows everything that you're you've dealt with that you're going to deal with. And he still picks you mm -hmm. and he still chooses you. He still chooses you. He still calls you. He still uses you. God has nothing to use but sinners. Mm -hmm. And people just want to unfortunately believe that he can't use them because of whatever they're dealing with. And you look in the Bible and it's just full of nothing but messy people <laughs> that God used for his purpose. And, you know, yes, it all points to Jesus. And obviously he's the only perfect person that lived. But there's, you know, we're just... We've all fallen short. I, mean, I watched that reel today that Kelsey had created, another one of the reels. And one of the things that I said that I don't even know if I myself caught when I said it until I watched the reel uh, where I talked about people who throw stones. And I and I stepped back from the podium and I said, I'm just not throwing stones anymore for the rest mm -hmm. of my life. I, By the help and grace of God, that's where I want to live the rest of my life. Not, not doing that, not throwing stones. Of course, you speak the truth and you, you just speak what is real and right and righteous and all of that. But to just be that guy or that person that just bashes people and judges everybody. Uh, Kathy, you said it in both things over the Kathy Murray, that thing that bothers us the most in other people is it's usually the sin that we deal with in ourselves. Amen. And I said this too, have you noticed that the people who judge other people the worst are usually the ones that have the most to hide. Exactly, because it's it's like projection. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want you to find out about blank, so I'm going to talk about your blank. How dare you? And it's just... That wasn't planned it's either. It's like a cycle. That was funny. That wasn't in my notes. How dare you judge me? And I've really, I've literally, once I said it, I went, oh, I've used that. I, <laughs> I've actually done that. When people get too close and they're starting to get your junk, well, that's usually how it goes. And you, I, you can't judge me. You better but check yourself. You got, you're worse than I am, and it works because then people go, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Yeah, people I, are real quick to play victim. I'm so, ooh, that's a good one. People are very quick to play victim. Mm -hmm. You will do whatever you want, whenever you want, and the 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 minute you're faced with the reality of your consequences, mm -hmm. or the minute you're faced with someone speaking truth, and you know usually out of love just to try to help you out of the situation just like that how dare you judge me oh you're judging me no you're playing a victim now like you brought this you brought it on yourself a lot of the time you know i think <laughs> i think a lot of people attribute to the devil what they did in their own mind yeah what they did devil did it you mm -hmm. made you you're facing the 
I saw a uh, a clip earlier on that one older guy that goes to like colleges and preaches mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, and there was this one guy, an atheist, that was just like losing his mind. And I only saw you know like a little bit of the clip. And he, the the Christian guy was calm, quiet. Let the guy just ramble on, ramble on, ramble on. And then as soon as he started talking, the guy immediately typical starts trying to cut him Interrupt. off and talk mm -hmm. over him and then the guy was like you know i let you talk and then of course the guy instantly oh i know you didn't even cut me off and it's like it's the same spiel, spiel every time but the and he was talking about how his comment was if there was a god he must be evil because he's sending people to hell and he brought you know did the typical argument of um you know, you wouldn't choose something with somebody holding a gun to your head. And he said that the only reason people choose God mm -hmm. is the threat of hell. And then the guy brought up, no, you, you're choosing to do what you want. You either choose mm -hmm. in this life to follow God or you choose to reject God and you deal with the consequences. And the guy kept going on it. And he said, I can't remember what he called it, but the, the Christian guy said, no, it's called, it's called maturity. It's called growing up. When you grow up, mm -hmm. And it was all the college students. He was saying, you know, you guys can either choose to party, 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 and then you're gonna flunk, 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 <laughs> or you choose to study, and then you reap the consequences of that. So if you choose to just go your own way and reject God, you're choosing the consequence mm -hmm. that comes with it. Amen. But all people, good. all true. And it was, I think, I, there was the one, I haven't seen it, but the real, I don't even know if it's out yet, but the one where you said, um, I'll believe it if it makes sense. Yes, it's out. Yeah. Was that? Did I send you the one clip of the uh, one other? It was the same about guy, the guy who it? said that he would believe, he would agree yeah. with God if God made sense. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you did. Yeah. He said it was the same, the same, that same yeah. Christian mm -hmm. guy, and he was talking about to another <laughs> atheist. Um, and I would was, believe. I would agree, or I would obey him if I agreed with him. He said, "Well, what is it? What does it mean following Jesus?" Like mm -hmm. if he, the Christian guy asked him, "If it was true, would you follow Jesus?" He's like, what does that mean? He said, "Obeying his commands." And he said, "Well, I'd have to see them right. first because I might you know, not if I with agree with them, then I'll believe, and then Woo! I'll follow him." It's like, but so it's what all you do? Pride. You take God off the throne and you bring him down to your level. It's pride. That's never going to work. It's like the I don't I don't know if this is the wrong thing to say, but it, it's almost like it's the original sin. Pride is what made. Yeah. Satan fall from heaven, mm -hmm. and you know that's what he used to tempt Eve and Adam. And you know, oh, you you'll be like God, mm -hmm. and then their pride gets in the way, and then they fall, and that's how sin enters the world. Come on, and it's all just it all just boils down to pride. Man wants to. It's like the Tower of Babel. We they tried to mm -hmm. get up to the heaven and reach the throne by themselves because man is too prideful. We think we can do it on our own. That's one thing I can say. Thankful about the era of Christianity that I grew up in, that we had an awesome reverence for God. Uh, this big daddy in the sky, hey daddy God, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> we just didn't roll with that. He was and is an awesome God of power and might, surrounded by the the worship of the elders holy 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 lord god almighty so we grew up with a humble reverence of, to god we didn't take his name in vain we didn't you didn't use his name in slang none of that oh you know he, he didn't do it because he was was and is an awesome god the world is going to see that let the let all the earth stand in awe of him there's a reverence that we need to bring back uh well as we know, every knee will bow and every tongue right. will confess. And unfortunately, <laughs> one side is going to be uh, in reverence and the other will be in fearful awe. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's. I love that. The door, the door to get out of your prison cell that you're in is open. Mm -hmm. People Every want to go their open. own way. You know, Kelsey shared that clip from church people where the mother had uh, dementia and it was Dean Cain <laughs> was the son and he was talking about, you know, my life is perfect. Mm -hmm. And he didn't believe in God, but her life, mm -hmm. she spent praying and all that. And now her whole life was falling apart. She had dementia. And then she looks at him and goes, you know, yeah, Satan lets people have mm -hmm. easy lives because that's all it takes for some people. To keep them and right you're, there. And you're stuck in a prison cell that mm -hmm. you can easily just walk out of and choose to walk out of. Mm -hmm. The door's open and then one day it's not. Amen. Sony. And that's rough. Solana. Life is about sawdust and planks. We are all hypocrites, said God. <laughs> Come on. You said it right. You're yeah, sitting uh, that's, on the throne that's of your own life. Pride. Everybody.
So what broken things did we bring up that maybe affected you guys? I don't know if you want to bring it out, but I made a list of broken things that we keep hidden and fear, insecurity, emotions, flaws, anger, anxiety, sadness, ungod ungodly lifestyle, dirty laundry, mistakes, mental health, habits that control us, our shame, our wounds, disorders, resentment. Uh, what hidden things that you might have out there that uh, are right there? Well, it's funny too, and I was listening um, to it on the way here, and the resentment one really stood out to me because resentment is birthed by hiding things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you have an issue with someone and you <laughs> like today's typical society we either become keyboard commandos or we just you know mm -hmm. say it up in our head instead of confronting somebody to their face mm -hmm. you you hide you know things from that person if i've got a problem with you and we don't talk about it and we mm -hmm. don't come together and they don't even know that you have a problem with them right because you're too busy hiding it. And then that just, that gives birth to resentment. And then you're hiding your resentment until it boils over. So that one was what was stood out to me. You'd be amazed how much resentment there is. And I remember the thought that made me write that down. Uh, there's a guy that comes, comes to our church and people will come to me and talk, tell me, you know, this guy is so filled with resentment towards you. Uh, and it's, I don't know why, but it's one of those things that it's reaching a point where God's going to deal with you about it. Uh, God's going to deal with you about it. He always will. Any hidden thing that you have in your life, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not there just to make you shout and dance and run and speak in tongues and all those th things. The Holy Spirit is there to bring conviction into your life. And just as it was that day when you preached that, that thought and it hit me on the front row, that conviction power is a, what a blessing that is. And I said that. Proverbs 28, 12 is, is meant to be, God's blessing in your life. He wants to bless you with that. He who covers his sins will not prosper. But if you confess them and forsake them, you have mercy. Prosperity is God's will for your life. Even though you got a lot of churches and Christians that say it's not. Yes, it is. It's right there in his word. Third John 2, I uh, wished above all but they, things. That, I think you the would problem prosper. is they attribute prosperity mm -hmm. to money. And it's that's not all it's about. No, not that's at not all. all it's about. In fact, that to me, that's one of the least things. I mean... Because like if you, you've heard it said, your health is your wealth. If you're healthy, what a blessing that is. You're prospering. All the money in the world can't help you when you're, you're sick. Uh, when you have peace, when you have joy, when you can lay your head down on your pillow at night, when you have the respect of your children and the respect of your, your family, when, you know, all that, all of that, what a blessing all of that is. That is prosperity in its truest sense. But it's been hijacked and now it's about a new private jet and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And. That's what they reject. So all in all, it was a great Sunday. I hope that everybody enjoyed it. I hope that you, if you haven't seen it, you'll go take a look. If you don't I mind. Yeah, it's on our, it's on our YouTube. Um, Pass it on, on and share it with somebody. I had fun. Sunday coming up. This Sunday is the third. first Sunday, the third, first Sunday in March. Um, um, Anything going on other than, oh, the, the food, food truck. truck. The food truck's going to be here for the morning service, right after the morning service. If you haven't heard, plan to stick around afterwards. Uh, Kathy Murray, you're up there in Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. We can't get a food truck up there. but <laughs> we, ship it. We'll post a picture of what we're eating down here for you. But anybody who's coming to church here in St. Augustine, you'll stop after service. Go outside, support a local business. What a blessing that was last time. Again, they sold out and they told all their friends and their friends are like, now their friends want to come here. So somebody had asked about a, a, an earlier, Jen Eveleth asked about a truck, if we had invited them. We don't invite them. No, we are coordinating. Um, I don't remember the name of the, the St. John's the group. Food Truck Co-op. Yeah, there's some, yeah, the, the Food Co-op, they handle all the stuff. Um, so they handle all that. Yeah, so if we don't invite people to personally. message the Facebook page or whatever, unfortunately, we're not doing any of that. We're leaving that up to the professionals. Um, and they're handling all of that, which makes it a lot easier on us as well. Mm -hmm. um, Amen. So that's yeah. going to be good. And Sunday is going to be a great day in the house. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm still, uh, you know, I'm, I'm planning on preaching Sunday. Um, right now it's looking like uh, Judges. Judges, uh, if you want to get ahead, Judges 6 and 7, you know, if you want to read the end of Gideon's story in chapter 8, but I don't I don't think I'll get that far. Um, it's going to be good. I've been taking a lot of notes, and I'm still working on 
constructing he's, everything together, but. He's usually super secretive and he never tells us me much, but he's been telling me a few little snippets and it's what I've heard is gonna be good. Come early, sit down, enjoy I'm it, invite it. somebody, share it. And Kelsey will create something that you can use as an invite. She's doing a great job with all of that. Also coming up through the month of March, uh, the next Sunday is gonna be the time change. Oh yeah, <sighs> I always forget about that one. It's the, the worst one, forward, it's yeah. the one where we lose an hour. So I'm gonna be preaching that Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> so it'll be you and me and three other people here, but we'll be we'll be there for that. And then um, is uh, St. Patrick's Day, the seventeenth, Palm Sunday, the twenty fourth, Easter Sunday, the thirty first. It's a great season. Um, it's not too early to tell y'all. Uh, Easter Sunday is going to be two services, nine and eleven, and what? But there is going to be a difference. Right? Yeah. We're going to shift it a little bit. We're, we're testing the water on our two-service rotation. Uh, can we tell them? We're going to do the children's, all the children's stuff at the 9 a.m. So if you have children and you want to come to church on Easter Sunday morning, come to the 9 a.m. The children will have all of the programs going on. There will be great little things for them, crafts for them. Easter Sunday morning is always special. Uh, we'll be taking communion that day. And then the 11 o'clock, the 11, the second service is going to be an entire family service. So everybody sits together. There'll be no children's activities. There'll be no, none of that. They'll all be right in the sanctuary. So it's a complete departure from what we've done before. Usually we do the family service at nine, then the children at 11. But we're going to switch it because we're thinking about maybe moving forward. That's how we'll do that. it. And that, that's only in place until we um, get more volunteers to Yes. staff the uh, 11 o'clock service. For, They're getting a lot uh, of volunteers very quickly. Yeah, they are. So that's good. And we might, you know, it might end up that we end up having enough after, you know, a short amount of time. <laughs> Brandon, well, at least it'll sound good. <laughs> Thank you to the sound man. There are three things that control every service, sound, spirit, and temperature. Number one is sound. If you get the sound right, that's number one. That's true. The We're spirit. still waiting on it to get right, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's your brother talking to you. Yeah, whatever. All um, right, but that that is it for tonight. We we thank <laughs> we you guys be quick. for joining us. I mean, it was about the same regular time, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, so Sunday, come ready. Judges six and seven, eight. If you want to be an overachiever, Woo! and uh, come early. Invite a friend and bring your wallet for the uh, for the giving and for the food truck uh, as well, because we're still service. working on getting that land, which is an exciting development. What land? Wetland? 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 The 60 acres? Oh, I was like, about that? I missed the comment. Yeah, we're working on it. We're still working on it. But that is it. We'll see you Sunday. Come early. We love you guys. Have a great rest of the Good week. Night. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.